So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. Today is March the 17th, 2022. The topic for this evening is levels of evolution. I left off last week talking about the rise of the um, Atlantis civilization. And I just want to talk a little bit at first about the the fall of the Atlantis civilization, because it is really illustrates a point, is that there are cycles that civilization come, it starts to rise, and then there's an arc for its development. And then there is also a time when civilization, no matter how magnificent it is, it will start to fall. And that's because it's, it's a cycle. And if you look at reality, if you look at everything, even with ourselves, we, we are within that cycle as well. We are born, we grow, we um, into strong adults, and then at some point we start to, our health start to decline, but then hopefully our wisdom and our learning will start to become stronger. And then we'll be able to pass on whatever it is that we've learned to the next generation. And then we die, which is when we let go of our, the the life stream that we have. And then we'll go on to the next and to the next. So back to the fall of Atlantis. So the fall of Atlantis, is it begins or it, it began actually at the the rise at the rise the um the galactic people worked with or approached part of the anunnaki the 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 part of the 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 faction of the anunnaki um people who who are the dominant um race within on earth at that moment at at the time maybe about 15,000 years ago Um, actually they came before that but it's right around the 15,000 years time frame when it's very clear that there are two factions within the Anunnaki and one of the the faction really looked upon human beings as the future and they they feel that the future is to be part of the human race to be part of earth is to make earth their new home and so the um the pleiadians the arcturians um the and also the syrians they came together and they approached the um, the faction of the Anunnaki that is willing to work with human beings instead of trying to, you know, squeeze every inch of energy out of them to to take whatever they want from Earth and just leave um, a mess around. So they worked with. The, the faction of the Anunnaki that really wanted to grow on earth and to throw in their future with being um, on earth, thriving on earth with all the other human beings as well. So what the Syrians did was they actually start to um, prepare the earth energetically. So, so they start to place um, energy disks into the earth itself along, a, on, along the path that is, already, um, that is already natural to earth. So they're not trying, they're not actually trying to 
um, create a completely new grid for Earth. They actually observed what Earth itself already is is like, and they use they 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 use their technology to simply tune whatever Earth has already. Um, it's already there. So they they really made the energy stronger so that even without being very sensitive, the, the people would be able to sense and be drawn by the natural energy and also the strengthened energy of earth to, to do that. And because the, um, the Syrians people did that, so before, once they've done that, then the Arcturians already know that, yes, they can start the civilization in Atlantis in a kind of the, in one major area to start. But then the goal, the goal is not to just have the Atlantean civilization be based in one area. The goal is that once it's established, once a lot of the um, teachings have been passed down to all the people within the Atlantis area, that these people would be able to go and follow the energy of Earth and to bring and carry the Atlantean civilization so that it will start to populate and go through and follow the energy of the Earth and be able to um, seed a global civilization that is not not necessarily related to Atlantis anymore. So the idea is that Atlantis is the seat civilization that is going to be able to um, have all of these information being put in to the, the, the seed civilization and have all that seed civilization go and carry that on and become global, but not to necessarily to have everything as being Atlantean, that these seed, the civil, seed civilization is actually to go and create other civilizations and then more and more and more. So, however, the once all of that uh, is, was established, once the, the, the seed civilization of Atlantis itself um, was established, the ruling, or not really the ruling, they, they're not the rulers, the, they know that the Anunnaki's, the Arcturians, they, they all know that they cannot be the rulers. They can only be the guides. They can only be the people who transfer the information, the knowledge, this, or the, the, the knowledge um, of, from the Anunnaki's is how to survive because they are a, a military race. So the ability to be able to defend themselves, all that, all of that reptilian programming is part of the, the, the offering of the Anunnaki's. And then there's also the um, knowledge of the Syrians, the knowledge of Arcturians, Pleiadians, all of these different star people, they teach the Atlanteans, the, the sea civilization, really about how to become gods and goddesses themselves, how to grow their consciousness in such a way that they can transcend their reality. So that's really what the Atlantis civilization in the beginning was about, is actually to let the 
Atlantean civilization humans and also star races know all the knowledge that is needed in order to create their body as a temple so that they will be able to grow their consciousness until they can um, go through all of the dimensions until they actually how to get through to become gods and become creators, creators of worlds themselves. So that is really what's special about this Atlantean civilization, the seed civilization, that's the idea. And the Arcturians let the, um, the, 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 the guides or the priests and priestesses of Atlantis know that they have maybe about just over 2000 years to carry out this, to give all of the information and the knowledge to everyone that is within the civilization, the Atlantean civilization. And they know that after that, the, because of the, the energetics of the, the world itself on, on earth itself, they would, this, the factions within the Atlantean civilizations would be drawn to go and go to the other places within earth itself to, to go global with their knowledge and also to spread that knowledge to whomever it is that they may encounter on their travels. The thing is, after a while, the, the people within Atlantis, they didn't want to give up that power. They actually want to retain, instead of letting the um, different civilizations be spread out from Atlantis, they actually want to create these, the, the original Atlantis as the empire. So instead of creating a seed civilization to go global and create other civilization, they actually want to um, make all the other civilizations that's not based in the, the original location of Atlantis to be kind of satellite civilizations to um, bring in supplies, finance, um, skills to the seed civilization itself. So that's, that's what the, the original um, Atlantean civilization wanted. And because of this inability to let go of power, so it is a power struggle that it actually created them to, uh, it actually prompted them to use, had, well, not really mind control in the way that we know now to, to use television or all that, because their, during their time, their, um, their technology is sound vibration. So they actually use this vibrations um, technology in order to control the other um, satellite, like for them satellite civilizations. And because they, they turned on this, this um, sound kind of weapon, I, I should say, it's more, more like this control system. They, this, this control system, because it is a vibration, so it actually affected the vibration of earth itself. It destabilized the vibration and the, the, the magnetic grid of earth itself. And because of that, disaster just hit. And I think um, I've, uh, maybe a year ago, I already mentioned that it actually got so bad is that it actually ripped this, this ripped the, the fabric of reality. It actually ripped the, 
um, fabric of dimensions. And because of this, the consciousness of the earth civilization fell really rapidly, almost overnight. And there were very few people, only those who, who have actually um, made the asc ascension process to, to get to at least fifth dimension consciousness, only a, um, a fraction of the population of the Atlantis civilization was able to retain their consciousness. Most of the other people on earth lost whatever um, consciousness they have. And so it plunged earth back down to a very low vibration. So that was the fall of Atlantis. It actually created such a rift that um, we are still recovering from that. Or it took really a long time to recover from that. So this is, that is the fall of Atlantis. So why is that? Um, why did that happen? Because in the Atlantean time, um, dimensions of consciousness is not something that is separate. Actually, what we know about dimensions is very different from how the dimensions actually functions. So that's why I want to take some time just to go through the how the dimensions actually work together. It's not that, you know, third dimension is just third dimension. There is, we have to go from first dimension, second dimension, third dimension, and go linearly. We used to think that that is the case, but that's not my understanding anymore. My understanding is that before the fall of our consciousness, before that rift in consciousness that was created because of karma, of, of um, this power struggle within the Atlantean civilization that created this rift in the dimensions. Before that, the dimensions are actually is, um, they work together. They flow not linearly, is that they are actually, what's the, what's the word I'm trying to say? Is that they, they work hand in hand. They, that there are the, the beings from the sixth dimension actually needs the people in, that is in the third dimension for them to understand certain things because there are each dimension has its own qualities. So the dimensions actually, the beings from different dimensions actually work together in order to raise consciousness. So in order to illustrate that, I just want to go through kind of quickly what each of the, the, the how the dimensions came about and what is the particular specifics or the, the, um, the main feature of each of the dimensions are. So I did um, kind of talk about the creation or creation, not just of earth itself, but creation of consciousness is that in the beginning, there is nothing. There is not, e no, not even consciousness. There is a void. And the void is really what we think of as the universal creator or God or whatever name that we use to um, label the consciousness that is beyond time, space, beyond, and includes everything. It actually is the void. Void means it's darkness. There's not even consciousness, not even light, nothing there. 
So at that, in that stage, there really is no dimension yet because consciousness has not even entered yet. But before consciousness, there is that void. And so within the void, creator, the universal original creator has a thought. And that thought is that it wants to know itself. It wants to find out what it can do and what its capability is. And so once that thought come into existence, the first dimension came into existence because the first dimension is really the creation of consciousness itself. But it is a unified consciousness. It's just oneness. It's consciousness is unified consciousness. And in truth, the first dimension is actually the only dimension that exists. And when that consciousness and the desire to know itself, to find out what it can do, when that thought came into existence, then it has to find a way to make that happen. And because a unified consciousness cannot see itself because there is nothing but itself. So you can't really see yourself unless you are outside of yourself looking back in. So in order to learn about itself, to know itself, it has to split to become inside and outside, which means that the second dimension is created. So second dimension is duality. It's really creating a, at least two different point of view. The one that is observing and the one that is being observed. So the negative is really the one being observed. And then the positive is really the one that is doing the act of observing. So then within this duality, there is this momentum of continually splitting into observing and being observed. And it's not just one being observed in uh, one being split into two but from that from each of that there are many other splitting as well there are many levels of observing itself from the 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 biggest all the way down to the the most um the smallest as well so this observing and then coming back together again in order to split up again this motion of splitting and coming back splitting and coming back created energy and when energy when so much energy is being created from duality it started to create energy and energy became third dimension so this energy provides the all that is needed in order to create form. So form is really the third dimension. Form is the third dimension. And once third dimension is being created, then the fourth dimension has to come into place, has to come into existence as well, because the fourth dimension is time because um, form um, in order to observe form form exists in time so time allows the consciousness itself to be able to observe processes to observe form in action over 
a lot of um, different iterations. So forms come into, so um, let me just find that. Let's see, yes. So fourth dimension, in order to observe form, in order to use form to know itself, the consciousness have to create the fourth dimension. And I already mentioned in previous episodes that within the fourth dimension, there are four pillars. So expression, experimentation, integration, and transcendence. This is how form is being helped through the fourth dimension, through the fourth dimension, the, the eternal form has to go through these four pillars of, um, these four pillars of birth, reproduction or growth and reproduction and an aging, which is integration of understanding of being able to integrate and learn from all of the different experimentation throughout our lifetime that we can get to the point where transcendence is we die because our life stream we've learned all that this one form of our body is capable to learn with what we were born with. So we go through the death and the transcendence. All of these four is the four pillars of the fourth dimension. And because of the fourth dimension that we can learn in the third dimension, we can learn through experimentation. And each of the consciousness within source was able to divide and divide and divide itself into many different um, species, many different lifetimes, many different races, many different um, interests, because in one lifetime, maybe all I'm interested in is to learn about how to grow flowers. And then the next lifetime, I want to this time come and learn to uh, learn how to um, make clothes, to, to be a fashion designer, to create financial success for myself or be a uh, or learn how to heal others to learn about our body what's really makes our body work and what really takes us out of health uh, out of um, balance in our health so different lifetimes we come to learn different things so each one of us mm, go through this process of having many many lifetimes and at some point, when we have gone through enough learning, we have gone through all of that, we start to get to the point where we become the fifth dimension, we get to the fifth dimension. And what the fifth dimension is, is really in the middle of the fourth dimension. So in the middle, meaning that we don't just observe, we don't just observe one lifetime, is that we are able to, from um, a spirit point of view, in order to observe all of our lifetimes and learn from that and be able to learn from the spirit point of view, not from not just from our body's point of view, not from being in 3D, but in fifth dimension, which is um, an elevated dimension where we actually 
are beyond time, beyond space, beyond just one body, that we can look at all of the lifetimes that we have lived and start to know about ourselves, start to learn to not judge or see from just one perspective, not just to see um, our perspective our, or our personality from one lifetime, from this lifetime or that lifetime, that we have, we are able to see that all throughout our lifetimes that we, there is no right, no wrong. We start to get to neutrality because we know that what we live, what we experience during any one particular lifetime is simply just one perspective. And when we start to get to the fifth dimension, instead of just four expression, instead of just four expression, we actually have um, more expression. So we start to learn the expression of unconditional love because we have not just one lifetime. We have many, many lifetimes that we can look back on and become able to let go of judgments and see all perspective. So we start to grow in our wisdom. We don't just... We don't just experience them. We don't just experience hardship. We start to know that each hardship actually teaches us something. It actually, we, when we turn knowledge into wisdom, it's not just knowing something, but we start to understand what truth is. And when we start to feel the truth, then we don't we can get out of that um, that the 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 need to keep experimenting keep going through this birth and reproduction and aging and death process we can start to get out of that wheel of going back in we can actually start to look at our life from not just the human point of view, but also from the spirit's point of view as well. So that is really what the fifth dimension is about, is, is to start to gain in wisdom and to start to understand that each of this life, each of the lifetimes is really a evolving our consciousness, that our consciousness, the, the spirit part of us is really the real um, self. Not, we're not so much attached to the body anymore. And then when we get to that understanding, we start to move beyond space and time, we start to move beyond our body as well. And that is when we can start to move from the fifth dimension into the sixth dimension. So the sixth dimension is really beyond matter, is beyond body. So matter is bound by time and space. And because you are bound by time and space, you really cannot create your own reality freely you you you're still bound by matter but when you get to the sixth dimension that's when you can actually get to the point where you can start to create your own reality and sixth dimension is not a because it is not bound by matter so it is not a it's not a space. It's not, um, it's not a place that we can get to. It's a level of consciousness. So when we get to the sixth dimension, we start to become architects of our own reality. 
because we are outside of matter. So we actually know how to transform matter. How do we actually transform matter? We actually transform matter by understanding what polarity actually is, that we no longer in polarity as well, or I should say that we no longer have any judgment regarding polarity. We understand that polarity is really the tool to create ma and transform matter. So positive and negative actually works together. So six dimension beings, um, there is no, there's no more thinking that, oh, you are, you are working for the light and you are working for the dark. So I like the light and I don't like the dark. So I don't work with the people in the darkness. That's not what six dimension beings are like. Six dimension know that darkness and light, positive, or I should say negative and positive, actually works together. Negative darkness actually is what shapes the light because we are simply light that is being conditioned by darkness, being conditioned by um, a distortion of the light. That is how light and darkness work together. So when we get to the sixth dimension, we start to be able to, as a, as a being, as one being, we are able to know how to transform matter. That's what the sixth dimension is. It's beyond matter. And it is about transforming matter by working with darkness and light negative and positive. And that's when we work hand in hand. And when we are able to transform our own reality, we start to learn how to transform the reality. And that is when the beings in the sixth dimension is able to create a reality so that beings in the third dimension can experience it. And so that's why six dimension beings work with third dimension being, uh, dimension being in order to refine this creation of reality. And when this creation process, when we are able to refine our ability to create reality and experience reality alternatively, that's when we start to grow in our understanding. And that is when we start to get into the seventh dimension. The seventh dimension is we become enlightened, or that is really the, the, that's what we refer to when we say enlightenment is because when you're in the seventh dimension of uh, consciousness, you start to become so aware of, um, you started to become so aware of everything that is happening, all the different um, realities, how to create them, you become a master of that. And you can see and realize that you're actually one because you are the one that's creating and transforming the reality. And you are also the one that is experiencing the reality. And you also know that, know how to work with light and dark. 
positive and negative. So when you get to that level of mastery, you can create heaven on earth would be simply um, easy for you because you've understood all of that. You have gone through all the experience, you know how to tweak matter and what it feels like when every time you, you, you tweak matter, that you know how that is actually going to be um, experienced. And when you have lived through all of that experimentation, then you become the master. So when you've become the master, you also um, get to the point where you can create the reality that you want seamlessly, flawlessly. So you become the creator of your own reality. And when you become the creator of your own reality, that's when you're ready to go into the eighth dimension. Because the eighth dimension is when you are not just have um, access to your own mastery, your own experiences. You actually are able to connect and have um, access to all the other beings, everyone else besides you. You're able to tap into their creation, their experiences. So eighth dimension is really the, the God consciousness. And that's when you actually know everything. When in your consciousness, you start to be able to tap into all of existence, all the experiences, all the realities, all the universes, and you are able to tap into anything that you want. So that is eighth dimension. When you fully integrated all of that and you've learned all that you want to learn and you know what you are capable of as not just as one being, but as all being, as source being, that's when you are ready to go into the ninth dimension. So what is the ninth dimension? Ninth dimension is the transcendent dimension. That is when you get to the point where, oh, you've answered the question that you posed in the first dimension. You have experienced everything and you have, would you please uh, mute yourself? Sorry, you are, thank you. So when you have integrated all of your learning, you've answered the, the question that you posed in the first dimension, that is, you know yourself already, you know what you're capable. So you can let go of everything. So that's why ninth dimension is actually, you get back to being the black hole. You get back to being the void because when you have understood the, the initial question when you've answered that curiosity that made you create the, the dimensions in the first place, you're beyond, you can get back to the place where you are beyond the consciousness and you are all and everything and you are nothing at the same time, you're the void. And within the void, you also have the freedom to create again, should you wish to. So that is what the ninth dimension is. So 
we've gone through from the first dimension all the way to the ninth dimension. Now, I actually just want to mention that from the first dimension, that there are certain trinities of dimension. Um, because I mentioned that the all ninth dimension actually are not linear, that they are actually a one continuous, that you don't have to go through from one to two to three to four and so on. You can actually jump. So I just want to mention a few combination that you can actually jump. So there is something called the Trinity of Consciousness. Consciousness is really about seeing yourself, about seeing yourself. So when you're in the first dimension, when you are in unity consciousness, you, you hold everything, you know everything, you are just unity itself. That dimension and the fifth dimension, which is the kind of the um, one of the, the first dimension where you have gone through the physical experimentation. When you get to the fifth dimension, that is when you actually can see all that you have done um, through experimentation in the third dimension. So the first and the fifth and the seventh dimension, the seventh dimension is when you are able to manipulate and step beyond time and space. And when you can create your own reality as a being, you can create your own reality. So that's when you see from that level. So in terms of consciousness as within the being, then the first dimension, the fifth dimension and the seventh dimension are related. So in the first dimension, you can actually move into the fifth and move into the seventh as well. So that these dimensions are related. And then there is also another, which is the second dimension, the fourth dimension, and the eighth dimension. There's a second dimension is when duality exists, when duality is the way to um, that a being can get to know oneself. But the second dimension, the duality, actually can uh, is related to the fourth dimension because the second dimension, duality, creates energy, and energy allows us to have form, and form needs time in order to and um, it needs um, time or needs death, actually, needs death in order to experiment, in order to be able to live many lifetimes so that it can get to know itself. So that's how we as a, um, within time, we are able to know reality and grow in consciousness. And the fourth is related to the eighth, because in the eighth dimension, that is when we actually not just get to know our own um, experiences, we get to know everyone's experiences. So that's why the, from the second dimension, we can actually shift into the fourth dimension 
there is a correspondence and the fourth dimension is corresponding to the eighth dimension. You can think of it as in this, the second dimension creates the structure of the fourth dimension. So the fourth dimension is when we start to be able to look at our own personal Akashic record. Whereas when we get to the eighth dimension, we have access to not just our own Akashic record, we have access to the cosmic Akashic record. So that's how these um, dimensions are related. And then the third dimension, the third dimension is matter, is how we are able to experience form. So I've already mentioned that the third dimension and the sixth dimension are related because six dimension beings know how to manipulate matter. And it learns from the third dimension because every time you, an architect, create a new reality, that being needs the beings or needs the consciousness within third dimension to experience it and be able to know whether that um, the, the creation, the, the architect has done a good job or not. So that's why the third dimension and the sixth dimension consciousness works together. That's how beings in the sixth dimension learn is through the third dimension, through the experience part of it, the experiential part of it. And the ninth dimension is also related as well, because the ninth dimension is really when everything goes back to void. So when you are in the third dimension, if you meditate, through meditation, you can actually be able to reach beyond matter because you, consciousness, um, doesn't really have matter, does not really have form. It's really a creation of consciousness to use this creation of form in order to experience. However, when you understand that it is simply, that form is simply a creation and the form is not you, you are simply using form as a tool, when you understand that and you get to the part where you can let go of form and you can let go of everything that you know, that's when you actually get to the ninth dimension. So that's why three, six, and ninth dimensions are dimensions that you can, if you wish to, you can actually shift from third dimension through the sixth dimension of getting through to beyond matter. Then you can actually go into the ninth dimension of the void. So when you can balance everything, when you can, um, go through the sixth dimension and let go of hanging on to this body, to this matter, when you know that you can transcend matter, that you are not matter, then you can actually go through that to the ninth dimension, to the void. So why do I want to bring up all of these dimensions? What is the relevance of now? What is, why is now 
the time to talk about these dimensions is because we are actually getting to the part where we are in the cycle of evolution when we are getting to the point of we are matching where we were in the Atlantean time before we ripped um, dimensions, before we before the fall, before the fall in consciousness in, in the Atlantean time, we are at that time now. We actually, at the equivalent of that in terms of our consciousness, not really in terms of technology, but in terms of consciousness, we are right around that time when we start when we are transcending all of our learnings within this dimension and we are able to go beyond. So we've gone through some interesting time in the last couple of years. It's all actually to prepare us for this jump in consciousness that is coming. And the importance of introducing this dimensions is that several questions that you need to ask yourself is, are you, when you think about your life, when you think about yourself, how do you feel about yourself? Because um, if you don't like what you're seeing outside of you, if you don't like yourself, if you are not balanced yet, if you are not who you think you are, then it is time to balance that. Because if you're not balanced, you won't be able to make that jump into the, the next consciousness. I'm not saying that we only have a few years. We have more than that. However, it is time now for you to be able to get to the point where you know where you are and what you need to work on because that is going to assist you in making a smoother transition. We, in the third dimension, our, our job is to understand that we are not just this body, to understand that we are consciousness we are spirit having a human experience and when you are imbalanced when you are so tied up in your body that is when you that's um that creates an imbalance because when you're in your body then fear survival all of that comes into play and it's not easy for you to let go of that. You would be, if you are, if you don't realize that you are not just a body, that you actually have a body and that you, your nature is spirit and that you are also a soul as well. So what do I mean by soul and spirit? Spirit is the cosmic spirit. That's what I'm referring to. Is, is really the divine in the divine in you, the part of the divine that created consciousness and created all the dimensions. That's what I mean by spirit. 
So the soul is really earth itself, earth itself, the earth spirit or the earth soul. The earth itself is evolving and you are here to, as a spirit, as the eternal spirit, working with the earth as a being in order to experience this third dimension. So it is about knowing that you are a body, but this body is not your body. It is really the earth's body. It is really, you are a, how should I put it? You are a cell within the body of earth. So when you realize that, you realize that you have to balance all of this. You have to balance and respect your body because you need this body to experience. Without a body, you cannot experience. And that the, this body comes with a soul which records all of the emotions, all everything that is happening during this lifetime and also other lifetimes as well. Even though right now you may not have a conscious recollection of those lifetimes, but those lifetimes is still a part of your soul. And you unconsciously are being influenced by those. So you need to understand and balance your own emotion and balance your own energy because that's really the alphabet of the soul is energy and emotions. When you can balance your own energy and you balance your own emotions as well, then your body will become balanced as well. And when you understand that you are not just this body, then you are able to get beyond fear. You're able to balance yourself. When you are consciously reminding yourself that you are spirit, that you are the, the one that is behind all of your experiences, that you are the one that actually from the sixth dimension create this third dimension for you, for yourself to experience. When you get that perspective, then you're able to move beyond survival. So this is what the the work of being in the third dimension and also transcending the third dimension, the work, the bulk of our work is, is to understand that everyone else in this reality on earth is also another cell within the earth collective itself. And that your body is your vehicle your own um, way, your own consciousness way of experiencing. And when you can balance and know that you are not just this body, you are, and you are not just this reality, is that you from a different dimension actually created all of the, the wars, all of the issues, that you are experiencing in this dimension. And all you have to do is simply keep that balance and not just 
think that you are this body or think that you are spirit and you don't need this body. You need all of it. You need to know that all parts of you work together and not just to favor one and be focused on one and not tick the others into account. So if you are feeling unbalanced, if you are feeling vulnerable, if you are feeling traumatized, it is because you forgot that you are also the one that is creating all of this experience for yourself. And it is time for you to remember. It is time for you to know that each of these other friends, your mother, your father, your neighbor, not just you, not just Canada, but Russia, Ukraine, everything. Whether you are um, Afghanistan, whether you are in Africa, no matter where you are, whether you're in Europe or you're in Asia, wherever you are, as long as you are part of the earth, you are all one family and you all created this reality for yourself to experience and that when you remember that you are all of that then you can start to transcend it you can start to get outside of that trauma because you are not the trauma you have experienced trauma, but you can let go of it as well. That you are not just this body. You are experiencing reality through this body. You are spirit. You are the one that created everything you're experiencing, not just for yourself, but for everyone that is on earth. And when you keep all of these different perspectives in your consciousness and start to come back into balance, when you can actually come back into balance, you understand that you can start to go through to other dimensions and you can start to shift reality. You can start to shift everything around and that actually nothing can stump you. It may temporarily in time and space be an issue for you, but when you know that you are able to get through beyond time and space, beyond this body, that you can actually manipulate this body, manipulate matter, manipulate consciousness in such a way that you can create a reality that is like heaven on earth. then you know that that is who we are becoming in this process.